Welcome to another episode of Vision Discoveries. Today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on the Cast King Zephyr BFS Reel. So this is a really interesting offering from Cast King. It's their first dedicated out-of-the-box BFS style reel. Um, okay, fairly standard packaging. There's, there's nothing new sort of uh, to look at there. Really. This is obviously quite nice, a little bit of... Um, compartmentalization so that the uh, the handle's a bit more protective. So just whip that out to one side. You, you don't get a separate uh, bag with this reel, but that's relatively unusual anyway, uh, I guess. But the, the first thing that strikes me upon getting it out and looking at it and just turning it over in my hands, given this is a budget reel, this is actually a really, really nice beautiful looking piece of equipment um the finish on it the standard of the finish and the painting it, it's really uniform it's really really well put together and i like the uh it's kind of a striking color scheme but not overstated at the same time it's kind of quite classy looking and obviously very reminiscent of the the dio Espresso um combination of colors as well uh this is a graphite uh, bodied reel, it's a carbon um, body of the reel and also the side plates. It weighs in at just about 5.6 grams, uh, which is a nudge under 160 grams, I believe. Um, so a very, very lightweight. One interesting thing to note is that because Casking have kind of, um, they've used an existing platform of one of their other reels in their, their range, and then created the BFS uh, reel from that, it's a little bit larger than some other offerings that are on the market. Um, that's not to say that it's like massive. I mean, I've got fairly small hands and it, it sort of, it palms pretty easily, um, even in my little paws. <laughs> so I wouldn't get too hung up on that. And as I say, because of the carbon construction, uh, there's an hardened aluminium gearing in there as well as a, a brass pinion gear. Um, so a combination of, you know, they're going for a combination of robustness and then lightness as well. Uh, and it, it does feel super light in the hand. But on the, on the size sort of aspect of it, if I compare it side by side with the, uh, the Daiwa Alphas Air TW, if I put those under the microscope, as it were, you can kind of see that Whereas this is a sort of a modified existing platform, the Alpha Air is kind of it's been designed from the ground up as a you know little you know tiny um, ultralight BFS style reel, so that is noticeably smaller um, than the Casking Zephyr. But that being said, that doesn't necessarily you know negate the any of the performance aspects of it. It may even suit your hands better to have a slightly larger reel. And this, it's certainly not a heavy, cumbersome, you know, overly sort of uh, clunky feel to it at all. Um, in terms of the greatest hits, just the, the top line statistics of it, you've got six uh, ball bearings and uh, one anti-reverse bearing, which is just to, to sort of obviously kind of, you know, keep the anti-reverse functioning on the, on the reel. So six ball bearings uh, in effect. Uh, they're stated as sort of um, high speed, so that they're looking to create that uh, ability for high speed um, and easy startup for the spool so that you, you're overcoming less inertia. Now, obviously, that sort of depends on how well cleaned or lubricated the bearings are at the same time. But in terms of the actual, you know, the nitty gritty of, of the bearings themselves, they are designed to cope with sort of these BFS kind of conditions. Uh, in terms of more just basic statistics, uh, you get uh, a gear ratio of 7.2 to 1. Because of the diameter of the spool, that gives you just over 75 and a half centimetres of line recovery per handle turn. Uh, and that's, I think it's 29.8 inches if you're going to go imperial measurement with that. The, the feel of it as well, it feels nice and smooth it feels like uh it doesn't feel cheap um even though it's kind of at an amazingly you know low barrier to entry price point it feels like a nice reel there's a little bit of play in in the knobs but when it comes to the actual handle itself 
uh, there's little little to no play in there, and obviously there's the spool tension plays a part in that feel as well. Uh, in terms of spool tension adjustment, you've got a very sweet sounding, subtle clicking uh, dial for the spool tension adjustment. You've also got a clicking drag star adjustment as well. What you don't get, although that's relatively unusual anyway in many BFS reels, what you don't get is the clicking audible drag. So it's a silent drag sort of out of the box. Uh, in terms of the, I've, I've explained a little bit about the feel of it, but um, in terms of the thumb bar, there's, there's little to no sort of play or mush before that actually engages, quite positive. Uh, and re-engagement as well is, is pretty instant. And that anti-reverse is positive as well. Doesn't give you a whole lot of, you know, cause for concern that it's going to go the wrong way on you. Uh, interesting point. If you can see right down in to the line guide, it's actually a conical line guide, and that's designed to reduce a little bit of the angle of that line coming off the spool, help to increase the uh, the distance by reducing that friction. Uh, we've got a static braking system. It's a bank of eight magnetic brakes, uh, but it is a static system. So whatever you set it at, that's the, the amount of braking that you're going to get throughout the cast. It's not like some of the dynamic brakings where, depending on the spool speed and how fast the lure's going out, you get a, a, a variable amount of braking. So that's something that you see on, for example, Daiwa's air brake system or Shimano's FTB system. Um, these are static brakes. On initial impressions, they seem pretty strong. So I'm keen to get out on uh, on stream and on the field and cast it against the tape and see how how those brakes actually perform, you know, in use. Um, and very interestingly, I'm particularly keen to compare the casting with different lure weights uh, between, let's say, comparable competitors in this sort of price point on the BFS market. And an obvious one for me would be to look at the GH100 with its dynamic brake system, but its heavier spool, and to see where we get crossover in performance, whether the the lighter spool of uh, of the Zephyr actually gives an advantage. And speaking of which, um, we're going to pop the uh, the spool of the Zephyr on the, on the scales just now. Um, what I'll do, I'll come over to this camera, move this out of the way a little bit, create some space. In fact, let's make some space like that. Pop those on and just check. Okay, so these need calibrating. <laughs> Cool. So we've got a nice, nice calibration on the scales already. Whip that off, and a case of uh, just flipping open the side plate here, popping it off, comes off quite nice and easily, and you can get a nice look at the spool as well, the uh, the colour and the sort of uh, also the porting pattern on that. Really quite attractive. Um, so, with the bearing still attached uh, on the spill spindle here, we are looking at a spool weight of a nudge over 8.8 .8 grams. I'd say 8.1, 8.81 grams uh, as a measurement with, with the spool bearing in place. I'm going to do this several times um, and when I sort of create the accompanying blog article uh, for this uh, for this reel, I can add in the uh, a slightly more um, accurate sort of estimate of the weight because I'll measure it several times and then get get a good average of it or get a good consistent weight of it as well. So the other thing, which is possibly more important still, is to check out what the actual you know the weight of this spool without taking account of the the bearing attached to the spindle. Uh, so if I just 
dive in here, make sure I don't bend this pin. It'll be fairly disappointing. <laughs> And it comes out fairly easily. It's pretty well sort of engineered to be able to be changed out. Now if I can manage this without dropping it, we'll be laughing. There we go. So slide that bearing off, put this back on the scales, and you can see that porting pattern there really clearly. And that gives us, it's coming in just under 7.7 .7 grams on this weighing. Uh, but it's in that 7.7 .7 gram ballpark, uh, high 7.6 to, to uh, just about 7.7. .7. Uh, again, I'll get some multiple measures uh, of that. You can see there as well the, um, the plate of metal that's available for the magnetic brakes to actually act on there. So that's how that particular mechanism works. But... Interesting because the out of the box that is really quite a light spool. Uh, it's significantly lighter than the GH100, which is somewhere around 9.3 grams. Um, and I think even without the bearing, it's over it's still over eight grams. So a whole gram difference there is is really quite significant. So that's that's one of the reasons I'm interested in looking at what happens between super light lures and Cast King reckon this reel is good for lures down to about one and a half grams which is you know that's that's pretty good performance um from you know bait casting reels you have to do you know there's some specialized engineering going on to, to let you do that but another thing that i'm interested in is um as well as comparing the gh100 and the zephyr out of the box what i'd like to also do is then get into clean cleaning up some of these bearings uh, and lubricating them with a, with a view to seeing, well, what, what exactly is the performance that uh, you can potentially get? So I've got some of my, you know, super low viscosity, super duper, you know, Japanese <laughs> real lube um, for the bearings there. And I'd like to go through and, and test those reels head to head, both as they come out of the box, you know, including how those bearings are lubricated at the factory, Plus, then going into um, cleaning them up and seeing what you know what performance you can get out of it, and I think it's not unreasonable to do that because it's a bit like buying a car. You don't buy a car and expect to do no maintenance on it whatsoever. Uh, whether you do that or the folks down at the garage do it, it it's expected that you're going to do a little bit of maintenance and cleaning um, on these reels to sort of get the best out of them. Beyond that, when you get into sort of tuning a little bit, then you know I'm looking forward to actually getting uh, some of the BFS dedicated Roro uh, bearings into this reel and comparable bearings you know fitted to the GH100 as well so we can we can look at sort of three levels of comparison really just purely out of the box cleaned and lubricated bearings and then tuned bearings uh, and to see whether you know whether there's a, a perfect combination a perfect storm of different factors that give you the best combination of, uh, uh, of performance features, if you will. Um, on that front, I am keen to actually incorporate not just pure distance as a measure, uh, depending on the kind of fishing you do, that might be the most appropriate measure, but particularly because we're looking at BFS here, what, I'm, what I'd like to do is look at some of those flat trajectory, um, close range accuracy style presentations and casts as well and how easy it is to achieve that with a range of different lure weights as well. And again, that's where I'm expecting to potentially see some differences between reels with better braking but heavier spools and seeing where those trade-offs actually come in. Um, so I've, I'm pretty interested to see how this, this reel stacks up, um, as I say, particularly against the GH100, but then going forward beyond that, I'm really interested to see how things at a slightly higher price point compare to it as well. So future videos, I'd look to also be comparing it to the, the performance of, for example, Fishband's uh, Hyper Micro, uh, the Clamber Hyper Micro uh, CR HMO6 specifically, because that's got an even lighter stock spool still. And in fact, that stock spool might well be the, the very lightest on the market at the moment. There's 
potentially uh, a, a, another spool that, that uh, should be very slightly lighter, but th there may be differences between different people's scales that might mean that actually that's pretty equivalent. Um, but as I say, that spool, it's there or thereabouts in terms of the lightest available on the market at the moment as a stock spool. So I'm interested to see how this reel on the larger platform stacks up against the Hyper Micro. So stay tuned for that. Uh, obviously, if you don't uh, already, you know, not already subscribed to this channel, you know how to rectify that. Click on the uh, subscription and also the notifications bell so it lets you know when when new stuff comes up. Um, but that being said, uh, I wanted to have a quick look at some of the the tolerance features as well on here. So if I clear some of this stuff out of the way. You can see in this bank of, of brakes, uh, the eight magnetic brakes that come with it, and there's, there's a uh, brake plate bearing sat in the centre of that uh, housing as well. This housing here, uh, I believe this may have been modified from the original version, and this is uh, definitely giving some props to Jimmy from Raw Fishing, uh, another YouTube channel, where Jimmy's been, he's, he's had some very proactive feedback to Casking uh, over the development of this reel and one of the things that came back as, as some user feedback was that there was a risk of the line actually getting trapped or becoming caught behind the brake plate and getting between the sort of the, the, the body of the uh, reel and then into the sort of the brake mechanism. I think if I fit this back together I believe that this um, housing that you can see now a lot better there I think that lip has been incorporated as kind of a spacer to decrease the gap and to and to make it more precise tolerance between the edge of the spool uh, and the, the gap that then would allow access to the um, to the brake mechanism if you've got a loop of line connected you know actually spun behind there um, so again it seems like you know casking have been pretty pretty good at um, responding to some of the feedback and the input from folks like Jimmy, um, which is it's just good to see. Uh, and if I just refit this, this bearing in place, you'd be able to see, hopefully, uh, when I refit the spool, it'll have, um, you can you can get a sense of that, that sort of reduced potential for that line wrapping around through the brake plate. I'm just gonna, I can show you this in close up actually, which why not? If I set that down there, make sure there's enough space. Get myself the right side of that pin. Oops. Playing skittles with the uh, real oil. Get that lined up nice and straight. You can see it's not taking a whole lot of effort for me to just recenter that pin. Um, it's a snug fit, but it's not. It doesn't feel like you're going to destroy the reel, which is that's definitely a feature with the Alpha Air. Is um, man, you know that the the gap between the edge of the spool and the the access to the pin is really tiny. The spool's really you know highly precisely engineered and very delicate, and then the pin is really stiff as well. But this one, it seems a lot more amenable to um, you know a little bit of tuning and a bit of exchanging uh, for other components. I'll show you how this fits together as well. Is a a nice positive latch there. It's open at the moment, but you can see that it, it flips easily but positively between the open and shut positions there. And then it's just a slight clockwise rotation. Gives you access for, to that. Your bearing can go in and locate into the slot down there. And then just reverse the process. But yeah, make sure that you go back to that closed position there. And then as I say, it's it feels nice, it feels smooth, there's not a lot of mush in the thumb bar, nice and positive. And you get pretty decent free spill performance as well out of the band. These are these are unclean bearings, this is straight out of the box, no uh, no adjustments um been made to that. Um it's interesting, it's very interesting because You've got this slightly higher diameter spool compared to the Alpha Air. So even though the Alpha Air has got the kind of the eight point six to one gear ratio versus the seven point two to one, the actual amount of line you recover per turn 
it's pretty much exactly the same between both of those reels. They're both around about the 75 centimeter mark. So you can see there that the, the diameter of the alpha air spool is quite significantly smaller than the diameter that you have um, on the casking Zephyr. So when you're thinking about the speed of these reels, although this is 7.2 to one, um, it's about the same speed as the Alpha Air, which is, again, it's an interesting comparison to make. Um, I think in terms of first impressions, uh, you know, again, I, I am really, really pleasantly surprised and impressed with how nice this reel looks, particularly at this price point. It's very widely available, so you can get this on Amazon in the US. I don't know if that's going to spread to other countries in due course, um, but between the AliExpress uh, availability and, and Amazon in the United States, you know, it, it's a mass market available reel, which is quite something because BFS obviously is a it's quite a niche. It's hopefully a growing niche, more people becoming interested in it, but. Uh, depending on how this performs out, um, you know, against the tape and in some of the different scenarios that we we'll put it into, it could be a really nice addition where we can we can uh, use stepping stones to kind of, uh, you know, get people scaffolded up to uh, to some of the JDM gear as as well as the other offerings within the market as well. So I'm really keen to get out on stream with it um, to cast it against, you know, back to back with. Uh, comparably priced reels as well as more expensive options as well and see where it sits across the board um, so if you want to come along and uh, actually get into some of that and the detail of that as well don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell because that way YouTube will let you know when we get out on stream and uh, get into sort of doing some of these comparisons so for now I hope you will join me when we get out and test this reel uh, but for now, I'll say goodbye and catch you next time. <laughs>